Each year in mid to late February, Horsetail Falls in Yosemite National Park lights up to resemble a flowing waterfall of fire. The amazing natural phenomena can be viewed from multiple spots within the park, and several evenings throughout late February. Seeing the fire fall in person is a bucket list experience that you don't want to miss. When to see the firefall? It's impossible to nail down a specific date that the firefall occurs because the conditions are entirely dependent on Mother Nature. But the last two to three weeks of February are generally when the firefall occurs. The Yosemite National Park website posts updates on the status of horsetail falls throughout the winter. If your schedule is flexible, it's best to visit Yosemite during a weekday because the area gets extremely crowded during the natural event. You'll especially want to avoid President's Day weekend because the place becomes a zoo the perfect weather. To catch firefall, conditions need to be perfect. First, Yosemite needs to receive enough snowpack during winter to provide lots of water flow down El Capitan. Horsetail Falls is a temporary waterfall, so without enough precipitation, there won't be anything to view. Second, the lighting needs to be perfect. Cloud cover is arguably the most critical element. Too many clouds can prevent sunlight from hitting the waterfall and kill the phenomena you want to visit Yosemite during a clear evening. Third, wind is an important element for getting the best view of the firefall. A little bit of breeze can exaggerate the phenomena, but on days that are too windy, the water that's supposed to flow down Horsetail Fall will just blow right off the top of El Capitan and never cascade down the side. So, to guarantee the best photos, you want to visit on a clear, windless day. What time to arrive? Sunset occurs between 5.30 and 5.45 in Yosemite National Park in February, and the best time to view the firefall is about a half hour before sunset, so you'll want to set up your camera no later than 4.30. Make sure to stay well past sunset. You never know if a sliver of clear sky is going to appear and light up Yosemite's firefall. The park gets extremely crowded during this time of year, with so many tourists looking to take great photos in front of the falls, so it's best to arrive in early afternoon to avoid traffic jams and find parking. Where to go? Fortunately, the firefall can be seen from several areas throughout the park, so you can pick whichever one is most convenient for you. The most popular locations for photography are along North River Road, the El Capitan Picnic Area, and Four Mile Trail. Southview near Cathedral Beach used to be the most popular and crowded area to get firefall photos, but the Park Service recently began closing this stretch along the Merced River because too many tourists were damaging the vegetation. You can see the firefall all along North River Road, so there are plenty of angles to choose from. The roadside is also light on trees, which makes it easy to get a clear view. At the El Capitan Picnic area, you'll find the biggest crowd, so it might be a little harder to move around. but. This area also gives you the closest view of the falls, so you won't need a fancy zoom lens to take a good picture. If you're looking for a great angle of Yosemite Valley alongside the firefall, then hiking up Four Mile Trail is the best place to get a picture. It's a bit of a walk and can get very icy, but above the tree line, you'll have far less tourists to deal with and more natural scenery. The Park Service keeps the first mile and a half stretch of Four Mile Trail open for hikers throughout the winter. Parking Parking in Yosemite Valley can get tricky this time of year. The most convenient location to park is in the Yosemite Falls parking lot. But if the area is full, you can park at Yosemite Village or Curry Village instead. There's a free shuttle that runs between these parking lots and Yosemite Lodge. From there, it's a mile and a half walk along Northside Drive to the El Capitan picnic area. One lane of traffic on the north side is closed, so pedestrians can easily walk there. South Side Drive is open to vehicles, but stopping or unloading passengers is prohibited between El Capitan Crossover and the Swinging Bridge Picnic Area. Unfortunately, the area between the road and the Merced River is closed, as well as the Cathedral Beach Picnic Area and Sentinel Beach Picnic Area because of the delicate vegetation. Embrace the crowds. While visiting Yosemite to watch the firefall, heavy crowds and traffic jams are just part of the game. To get the best experience, you should just try to embrace the atmosphere instead of looking for solitude and ending up with disappointment. Being surrounded by other tourists can turn out to be pretty fun when everyone gets to witness the spectacular natural phenomena together. Here are a few additional tips. February in Yosemite can get pretty cold, so it's important to pack warm clothes and maybe a warm drink to go along with it. 
Don't forget to pack a flashlight for your walk back to the car because it's going to be dark. A mile and a half walk takes about 30 minutes at a brisk pace, so you should be prepared to stay in the area for several hours. Winter weather is unpredictable, so you shouldn't bank on being able to see the firefall even if you show up at the perfect time of year. The Sierra Mountains can get extremely snowy, so you should bring tire chains with you and know how to put them on. Even though the firefall occurs just before sunset, you should make sure to stay all the way until the sun goes down. Sometimes the cloud cover disappears at the last second to show off the brightly colored waterfall. Avoid busy weekends if at all possible, and be aware that Northside Drive may close completely for about 30 minutes after sunset when crowds are particularly dense. Yosemite Valley has many great hikes and activities to do in winter. Don't limit yourself to just watching the firefall. Overall, viewing the firefall is a one-of-a-kind experience that can't occur anywhere else in the world. If you happen to find yourself in California during February, it's worth the trip. If you have some extra time to spare, it's worth checking out some of the other winter activities that Yosemite has to offer. The Badger Pass ski area is open from mid-December to March and offers a mix of beginner to advanced ski runs. Five chairlifts can carry you up Glacier Point where there are 10 routes to try. The runs range from beginner to advanced level, with the largest elevation change being 800 feet. Multiple free shuttle buses can take you from Yosemite Valley to the ski area above. Yosemite also offers snowshoe rentals from the Badger Pass ski area. While there are many different routes to take, the most popular hikes include a guided trek to Dewey Point. Kids and adults can also enjoy tubing in the winter. The Crane Flat Campground has some excellent runs if you bring your own equipment. This play area is also located near Tuolumne Grove, which offers gorgeous winter hiking trails nearby. And finally, if you want to get off your feet, there's no better way to enjoy Yosemite's winter wonderland than with a horse-drawn sleigh ride. At the Pioneer Yosemite History Center in Wawona, you can book a sleigh ride and glide across the deep snow near the south entrance. The horses will guide you through gorgeous woodlands, across a covered bridge, and past log cabins. After the trip, sip a cup of coffee or apple cider beside a campfire outside. <laughs>